Welcome back everyone, Pal Ponder on Weather here. Welcome to Pal Ponder Ultra. In this update, I'm going to explain the polar vortex, what it is, how it works, and some of the myths associated with it. So let's start off with the overall upper atmosphere heading up into the Arctic. And you can actually see this is the polar vortex that was disrupted way back on January the 8th. That pushed all the way down into the lower 48 and brought all the Arctic air down into the deep south. But heading into next week, we are going to be seeing that polar vortex rebound way back up in the, in the Arctic. You can actually see this is kind of a circular pattern. That's typically when it's strong. When it is strong, that bottles up all the colder air up in the Arctic and it puts all the warmer conditions underneath. And that's exactly what we see heading into next week are those much warmer conditions, well above average temperatures really lock in over the United States, bottling up all that colder temperatures way back up there in the Arctic and into Greenland. So let's talk about the science behind it. So here's the science. Whenever it's basically stable, when you have a stable polar vortex, that's what's going to happen next week. It's very strong. It's almost like a little ball that gets locked up all the cold air up there in the Arctic. But when it starts to become wavy, which it did become wavy, back on January the 8th. You see these little buckles in the atmosphere? So whenever it buckles like this, it sends pulses of that Arctic air and dislodges it. I talk, about, I talk about it all the time being stretched out. It's being elongated. So whenever that happens, that sends pieces of that polar air out of the stratosphere and in to the lower 48. So let's talk about the setup. So we do have a, still a small piece of the polar vortex left and that's going to be hitting the northeast coming up on this weekend on saturday so as the polar vortex starts to retreat we still have a piece of it that's going to be dislodged and with that dislodgement it has that buckle and that polar vortex heading up into the upper midwest through the mid-atlantic but especially into the northeast so these areas just get dangerously cold with 40 below zero and heading up in the northeast well below zero as the polar polar vortex starts to retreat and it will head back up into the arctic heading into next week so let's talk about this whenever you see it's you know kind of strong like this and then whenever it becomes weak you always look for these positives over the top we, i kind of talk about this all the time you see these positives over the top whenever that happens that's going to break the dam and send this polar polar you know air all the way into the united states so when i talk about a displacement or a, a kind of a stretch uh, it doesn't mean that there's instant air there's instant arctic air this is way up in the stratosphere we're talking about 30 30 miles up in the stratosphere so when i talk about a dispolar you know a polar vortex displaced that means it's displaced from the arctic and it's got to go through all the layers of the atmosphere and eventually head into the united states so when the polar vortex was disrupted back on january the 8th it didn't you know this morning is february the 2nd we're seeing the colder temperatures plunge all the way down in mexico that's how long it has taken since the overall disruption of the polar vortex and how it shifted all that colder air from the higher latitudes all the way down into the surface and going to be rebounding so it's a couple of week process there's always a lagging type of indicator with the polar vortex so here's some of the some of the myths so like you know kind of how to, how it explains it's typically it's always there i mean the polar vortex is always there even in the summertime it's just it's just pretty you know it's it's much weaker in the summertime but it strengthens in the winter so it's the polar vortex doesn't go away just because it's summer <laughs> you only really hear about it in in the winter time because it's a little bit more relative but yes, many times it breaks off into the winter and sends pieces of the polar vortex down into the United States. I think last year I counted overall seven disruptions in the polar vortex. I think right now we're about five polar, you know, polar vortex disruptions since basically winter began. And we're probably going to be having 
at least maybe a couple more of these polar vortex disruptions before overall winter is over and they can happen even into even into april even into may they it just may not seem like they're happening but they do happen whenever you can get colder weather entering even in portions of the may time frame it's still part of the of the polar vortex it's just not as intense as it was obviously in december january and february and and some of the some of the colder months so let's talk about a more intense polar vortex this is what's often referred to as a sudden stratospheric warming event so typically up in the arctic it's you know it's tip it's really cold right it's about 80 degrees below zero when but whenever you get one of those sudden stratospheric warming events you get this massive spike i'm talking really warm up there warm for the warm for the poles is around zero degrees <laughs> so whenever you see some something like this now one of these is more extreme it does not happen very often in fact it only happens maybe every couple of years or so there's no guarantee this happens every single year but when something like this happens it can be a more intense and a more an extreme dislodgement of the polar of the polar vortex and have more extreme temperatures so this is what it would actually kind of look like when you basically have those those positives over you know over the top and this is up in the stratosphere and then you have that kind of a elongation that stretching out of these polar lobes and filters down into the into the lower 48 and it's something that's probably a little bit more intense and it's something that lasts for an extended period of time longer than it would with an overall dislodgement or a stretch or a disruption and typically when that does happen, there's different forms and typically that would be more or less a split. So let's check this out. Here's the overall polar vortex split image. You would have that sudden spike, that sudden spike up in the Arctic. So the Arctic becomes really warm. So whenever that does, you have that dislodgement, that displacement of these polar lo lobes. And these are labeled as vorticity one and vorticity two. So whenever this typically happens is you kind of get like maybe a one two punch as you have the first Arctic impulse plunging into the United States and then the second one wraps around and plunges into the United States. Now something like that would occur would be a lot more intense. Like I mentioned, it does not happen very often. Some of the dates that some of those things have happened, if you recall way back in January, of 2019 back when the upper midwest had that arctic arctic displacement and that sudden stratospheric warming event when uh, illinois hit 38 below zero and if you recall when texas went in february of 2021 know, went to two below zero in dallas those were sudden stratospheric warming events and like i mentioned it does not happen every year and we have not actually had one of those this year and it doesn't mean it's going to happen this year we've only really had displacements or dislodgements or stretching out some of these like in this image right here of this polar vortex where you've got that positive you know kind of that positive over the top and then that displacement underneath sending in that arctic surge down into the Canada and down into the United States. So let's talk about the, you know, the millibars. So this is way up in the stratosphere. This is 10 millibars, right? This is 30 miles. This is 30 miles up in the as, uh, stratosphere. This is way up there. This is definitely way up. So there's all different layers of the, of the atmosphere. Typically, we I talk about 250 a lot, 250 millibars. This is around 33,000 feet. I talk about the 500 millibar uh, level. This is about, you know, up there about 18,000 feet. And a lot of times I talked a, bit, a little bit more recently of the 850 millibar level. And then this is about 5,000 feet. This was a little bit more relative because we had that freezing rain event, right? But, and a lot of people were asking me, hey, you know, if it's 28 degrees at the surface, why is it actually, you know, freezing rain and not actually snow? Well, that's because at 850, around 5,000 feet, they had, you know, a warmer temperatures around 45 to 50 degrees. 
So as it snowed, it melted during that warm layer, and then it refroze on contact. So you always look at the atmosphere at uh, look at it like a hamburger, right? There's all different layers of the atmosphere. I know we don't live up here, but we have to look at it because what happens up above plays out what's going to happen underneath at the surface. And it's so it's very, very, very relative. So I know you're asking yourself, hey, is the, is the polar vortex going to come back? I mean, what's happening now? So like I mentioned, we had the disruption back on January the 8th. We had the plunge. This is February the 2nd. And so now we're slowly retreating. So it's going to retreat away from the deep south. Going into this weekend, you have that Arctic plunge again with that just that that last gasp with that polar lobe entering the upper Midwest and the Mid-Atlantic and heading into the Northeast. And then it goes back and becomes strong. So but if you head out until after Valentine's Day, this is again, this is the stratosphere. This is way up there about 10 millibars. This is about 30 miles up in the atmosphere. We start to see at least the beginning stages of that displacement again. We see the elongation. We try to see these little fingers try to wrap itself around. So you try to get that those colder temperatures wrapped in underneath and have that you know warmer temperatures bottled up in the Arctic. And we're starting to see at least the beginning stages of something like that making the transition. Now, this won't be until after Valentine's Day. This is around the 17th time frame. So it could be we have more, you know, Arctic air coming back in the picture in the second half of February. So if we take a look at the overall 500 millibar, remember 500 millibar is about 18,000 feet up in the atmosphere. We kind of see this in the latest ensembles of the European guidance going way out there about the 17th time frame. We start to see more blocking starting to come back over Alaska, right? We start to see more ridging start to come back over Greenland. We start to see a little bit more ridging, these positives building back over the top, right? We see the displacement underneath and we try to get some of that colder air to penetrate going back into Canada and further south into the United States. And so that's exactly what we'll be looking at in the second half of February is possibly more Arctic air entering the picture with another displacement of the polar vortex. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video, definitely hit the subscribe button and catch the next update. Why I protect you before and after storm.